Hello everyone, today's video is about the changes from the electric eel wheel 6.0 to the 6.1. In this video I'm going to be talking about the changes I made between those two versions. So a general overview will be coming out later for the electric eel wheel 6.1, but this video is really just focusing on what has changed. So one of the changes I made was I added these switches. So now this is the Z and the S direction. Before I had a single switch and it had multiple purposes of starting and stopping and controlling the direction. Now I have dedicated switches. So this switch will control which direction the flyer is spinning. And this switch over here is an on off switch and it will turn it on and off. And because there's two switches that just makes the interface a little bit easier to use and the writing on them is easier to see because it's white now instead of just being molded black plastic. Uh, also, on the inside, you can actually, if you want, pop out these switches. I won't do that right now, but um, it's pretty easy to take these switches and switch the sides that they're on. So if you're right or left-handed, uh, that is something that can be done. Another nice change is that the orifice hook now goes on the side. So before I had the orifice hook on the top, which doesn't work because I have two switches now, but by being on the side, it uh, makes it so that if you have a yarn loop come out, it'll never get it. And it's a pretty, they're bigger magnets, so it holds it on there quite well. Uh, also, I put magnets on both sides. So again, right or left-handed people can put it on whichever side they prefer. Now I'll jump over to the bobbins. So on the previous version, I had a really faint line uh, here on the inside of one of the bobbin discs, but now I've got that line on both discs and I'm not sure if it's showing up in the video but in um, real life it's easy to see this line now it's much deeper and more obvious and what that indicates is that it's half full so that's pretty nice to use when you're uh, filling up bobbins and you want to ply two together so you know that well if I just fill them up to two single bobbins up to this line you can ply them some people want to fill up bobbins all the way and then use multiple bobbins for plying. But uh, if you're a kind of person who wants to fill up your bobbins with singles halfway, this line makes that easier. I also made the threads on this version work a lot nicer. So they screw together really nice, a little bit easier than the previous version. Also, uh, the bobbins, uh, you can sort of see the threads. A lot of people had questions if they were screwed in all the way because the threads stuck out a little bit. And uh, I made the threads end a lot closer to the uh, where the discs end. It just looks a little bit nicer, but it's uh, something I cleaned up in this version. So another thing I added in this version are these little yarn guides. So the purpose of these is the metal hooks here are not ideal for very bulky or art yarn. Uh, sometimes that type of yarn will get caught on these hooks. So I'm including a bunch of these little yarn guides, which just clip in pretty easily like this. And once they're in, the makes the hook have a larger diameter, which means that uh, bulkier yarn doesn't get caught on those thin little wires as often. So one thing I spent a lot of effort on was this flyer design. It doesn't look a lot different, but I did make um, quite a few different changes. One of the ones that does look different is there's now this brace across this portion. And what that helps prevent is it prevents the flyer arms from flexing out at maximum speeds, which makes it uh, have less vibrations uh, at those higher spinning speeds. I also, for higher spinning speeds, I, I modified uh, the flyer. It used to have a little groove on the inside of here, and there were some reasons I did that, but I uh, managed to get rid of those on this version. And it, it, not only does it reduce the wind noise, but it also makes the hook slide a lot more smoothly than they did on the previous version, which um, I really like. But uh, so you get a little bit less wind noise and smoother hooks. Along with those changes to the flyer, I also changed the plastic. It's still glass reinforced nylon, but it's a stronger type, a firmer type, and that's also reducing the deformation of the flyer at higher speeds. So um, that one's completely invisible and you'll just have to trust me, but it did make a noticeable difference um, changing the formulation of the nylon plastic that I'm using for the flyers. 
One change I made to the bottom was I added this little window here. And the reason for that is if you're looking at the battery, which I don't sell, but uh, I have some recommendations on my website. And if you use one of the ones that I recommend, you'll now be able to see how full your battery is uh, just by looking at the bottom of your case. So that was an easy change that for the people using the battery will be a, a nice bonus feature for those who use the included wall plug. It's not going to change anything. The orifice hook design is a little bit different. I added a loop on one end because now you, some people like to use strings with it. I'm not going to include a string because I have these nifty magnets on the side here. So the circuit board on this side looks pretty similar, but if you take the screws out, the other side of the circuit board is going to look a lot different. I had a, a major redesign of the circuit board and there were a few reasons I did that. Uh, the biggest one was it will make uh, the motors a little bit more reliable. It also reduces some issues I was having uh, with certain environments, uh, really staticky environments. Uh, sometimes when using the included foot pedal, it wouldn't work so well. So these are all things that affected very few people on the previous version, but um, while I was making changes to this version, I decided to address those and just make it more robust in more environments. Another change I made was, I'm not sure how this is going to show up, but the uh, motor shaft, instead of being completely round with a, a set screw on the side, uh, this one still has the set screw, but the motor shaft is now D-shaped and the uh, motor pulley is the same way. So that just makes it pretty impossible for the uh, pulley to slide on the motor shaft like it sometimes could when the set screw came loose before. So there'll be less confusion about that. The set screw still prevents the pulley from coming off. I changed the uh, drive belt here to be a little less tight. So a lot of people had uh, some issues putting it on. Uh, so this one I just made a little bit looser. Uh, both work about equally well. I just uh, wanted to make this one a little easier to put on. So I changed the formulation of the rubber being used for these belts to be a little softer. And I also increased uh, the size slightly, which makes it a little easier to put on to the motor pulley. But it should last just as long or hopefully longer. It's kind of hard to test something like that. But um, in theory, according to the uh, people making these belts for me, this one should actually last a little longer than the old ones. So one last thing I'll mention as far as changes is that it has a softer start. So I have it set to maximum speed and I just turn it on and it starts up a little bit slower than the previous version. That's a softer start. Uh, a lot of people requested I make that a little bit softer. You can also see that this one's less vibration than the other one. Uh, it's just really smooth due to all of those other changes I mentioned earlier. So uh, it's just a lot of little changes that kind of improve it overall, but there's no one significant feature change that uh, really is going to, you know, make this one great. It's just a lot of little improvements. And I find that, you know, as an engineer, that's often the kinds of things that are nice to include in like a, a, a new release, which isn't groundbreaking. Is it worth buying this one if you already have the electric eel wheel 6.0? Probably not. But none of these really add any significant cost to it. So I'm able to keep the price pretty much the same. And um, I'm just able to, you know, make it a little bit better for people who are buying it now. And if you already have the 6.0 and you're looking for a, a nice little upgrade, I, I'll have them on my store. Uh, hopefully not in the too distant future.